Hey everyone, it's Pat from Gaming Fix. Today we're back with another Fix Plays. Today we're going to be playing the new game from Fail Better Games, which is called Sunless Skies. Uh, if you're not familiar with Fail Better, Fail Better has made a few games. Um, their first one was Fallen London, which is a browser-based game. Uh, their second one was Sunless Seas, uh, which is a, uh, a game very similar to this one. It's kind of of the same lineage. Uh, and then this is the new game that just came out. Uh, it just came out of Early Access. I haven't played it at all. Um, so I'm pretty excited to jump in. I skipped the early access just because I like to wait for 1.0 usually. Um, if you haven't played Fallen London or Sunless Seas, uh, those two games are um, kind of micro-narrative adventures. I don't know if that's the right wording to use or not, but uh, they're really cool games that are focused on telling you lots of small stories. So Fallen London is a browser-based game uh, the gameplay itself is a little bit limited mechanically. It's a lot of your kind of getting currency from some story paths and then spending it to access other ones. Um, and then in the stories, you're kind of working to, uh, you're, you're doing skill checks um, and your skill checks increase by doing those skills. So it's, it's pretty mechanically light, but it's a really interesting uh, world. And then Sunless Seas is that concept but they added a layer of adventuring around in sort of a physical space uh, the browser game you're just kind of clicking between different options um, whereas sunless seas you're actually like you're you're taking your steamboat around the world um, so like the first fall in london is based on the idea that at some point that the earth is hollow and at some point uh, the city of london fell through the earth into the cavernous hollow earth uh, and just started to exist under the earth and that uh, and then sunless sea is sort of you exploring the vast untersea the ocean underneath the earth um with your steamboat uh whereas sunless sky is the premise and and i really don't know anything about how we got here <laughs> uh the premise is that you are a piloting a steam locomotive i should say you are sailing a steam locomotive among the stars um one of the things about the fail betters games that is both frustrating and that i really enjoy is that while there is a kind of larger lore happening, um, it's not very clear how to access it. There aren't things like codices. There aren't um, lore books and dumps that you can read. And it's not really clear to me if that's because it's not written or if it's because they want it to remain pretty esoteric. Uh, so that can lead to a little bit of frustration when you're playing their games. Um, the other thing is uh, that their games do kind of, in my opinion, they can struggle a little bit mechanically. Um, but, uh, from what I understand, Sunless Skies is a great, great, uh, leap forward in that department. And really, I can't stress enough that their writing is just excellent. Uh, they take the sort of, um, what, I hate to use the term guilty pleasure, but they take the sort of Victorian, vaguely steampunky, a little bit of Lovecraftian, kind of cosmic horror-y vibe that a lot of fiction has that's usually not very good. It might be very fun, but it's not very good. Uh, they sort of take that and and do some really solid, good writing in that space, which is pretty cool. That's It's not very common, especially not in video games. So anyway, without prattling on any further, let's take a look at this new game, Sunless Skies. All right, so this is one of the options. This game is has some serious roguelite elements. Sunless Seas kind of came out early in the roguelike kind of uh, renaissance or whatever you want to call it. Um, and it did have this concept of once your captain dies, there's permadeath, and then you can uh, you start as a new captain. Um, and that is a cool system. Uh, but in this game, I guess it's been expanded to be a little bit more prevalent uh, and a little bit less. Sunless Seas, it, it wasn't really a, it was a run-based game, but it wasn't a run-based game in the way that something like Dead Cells is. So I get the impression that this isn't necessarily like a Dead Cells, but that it is a little bit, it takes some inspiration from other roguelites that have come out since then. So I'm going to go with Legacy Campaign because that sounds like a cool way to play the game. So let's see, Aiming Assistance. I kind of want to try out the defaults to get started. We might fail horribly using these. Um, and maybe I'll want to make it a little easier in the future, but this is a good starting point, I think. Let's just stick with the defaults for now. Pause. 
apologies for the angelic light coming in. Um, I set all of this up, got the lighting good, and then the sun decided to come out. So. Ooh. Log of Her Majesty's Locomotive of the Orphean, March 14, 1905. Our expedition in the domains of the dead have been eventful. The Orphean is damaged and in grievous need of repairs and supplies, returning in haste to the Reach, where I hope to make port at New Winchester. May God be with us for a thousand deaths wait in the sky. Final entry of Captain Amelia Charity Whitlock, DCM, written shortly before her death. Spooky. Okay, Blue Kingdom Transit Relay. So this is sort of the same uh, kind of view that you get from uh, the previous game, Sunless Seas. It's a sort of top-down, um, very 2D, arty, artsy kind of view of the world. You return to the Reach, an untamed sunless span of the heavens, London's new frontier, a celestial garden run wild. Oh, oh, that's cool. Yeah, the controls here are very different from Sunless Sea. Your journey back from the Blue Kingdom was tumultuous. Your locomotive is crippled and Captain Whitlock badly wounded. Sunless Sea was more like you were sailing a boat, so you would set your speed and then sort of rotate around. This is a much more action-y. As first officer, the crew look to you. The nearest station is New Winchester. Can you get the Orphean there safely? These look like supplies. Much to the relief of your stokers, you find a barrel of fuel among the treatise. A wreck drifts here, less fortunate even than you. We should scavenge her for repairs, a crewman suggests. The wreck of the Ozymandias. The wreck hangs in the sky, pocked with recent gunfire. You and the boarding party don your sky suits, garments of wax canvas lined with felt to protect against the cold of the sky. Two of the crew are whispering as they dress. What business did Captain Whitlock have in the Blue Kingdom anyway? Why the devil did we trespass on the districts of the dead? You silence him. Now's not the time. So, we can leap across to the wreck. This is the situation where you might have choices to pick from here. The gap between the two engines isn't wide, but the endless fathoms of heaven gape beneath it. This writing is just, like, exactly my shit completely. Leading the way. You jump. Your stomach lurches with vertigo as the stars blaze above you and below. The air of the heavens is thin and torn by unpredictable winds. Then your boots hit the running board of the Ozymandias and your leather-gloved hands fumble for a hold. One of your companions throws you a line and you lash the two engines together. Only then do the rest of the boarding party follow you. One of them forces an ex open an exterior hatch and you clamber inside. Her interior is cold, unlit, and whistles with wind. Your party's lamps spread buttery light over the narrow, paneled passages. You make your way towards the hold, stepping over bodies cr crumpled in the corridor. Unfortunately, your way is blocked. A bulkhead has mangled inward and by an, a well-aimed barrage. So, we can choose. We can choose to do a... We have a 75% chance of using our Veil skill, or a 75% chance of using our Iron skill. So we can clear the obstruction away or lead your party on a more precarious path. So I'm gonna work. I'm gonna clear the obstruction away. So you locate a length of pipe to use as a pry bar to set and set to work. So tests our iron skill, fronting and overcoming. Successful. A memory. As you strain against the stubborn steel, you remember an event from a year ago. A boiler explosion had trapped an engineer under a tangle of plating and pipework. The captain was first on the scene. You were second. Together, you man managed to pry the wreckage upwards enough for your two to crawl beneath it, while the captain braced the bar across her back. By all means, take your time, she grunted as you dragged the engineer out. Back in the present, the twisted bulkhead yields. Your companions clear the exposed rubble away. The way is clear. You have reached the Ozymandias hold, a ruin of smashed cargo and spilled supplies. Hopefully somewhere amidst the detritus you can find parts to repair the Orphean and restock your stores. So we're going to conduct a thorough search. Your companions work quickly. The Ozymandias' hull begin, has begun to creak. Your actions on board may have compromised its integrity. Renewed. You find enough food and gear to restock your supplies and enough spare parts to make necessary repairs to the Orphean. The food will need to be thoroughly thawed, of course, but you've eaten worse in the skies. 
Oh, ho, cries one of your party, prying the lid off a long crate. It holds a cannon still nestled in straw. Another crewman pulls a battered birdcage from a pile of ruined cargo. Within the cargo, something winged and furred opens a sullen eye. You examine your finds. So you gain some supplies and 15 hull, which is the your hit points. So it's repaired, repaired the hull. The Ozymandias admits a long, juddering creak. Your boarding party exchanged nervous glances. From the chaos of its hold, you have retrieved repairs and supplies and discovered some useful equipment. A gun that could be mounted to your locomotive and an educated bat. Mount the Jerusalem cannon on the Orpheon. Liberate a diffident bat and, exp and employ it as a scout. So I want to take the cannon, I think. Um, oh, oh, we claim both. Okay. Her own weapons were damaged during your flight from the Blue Kingdom. That leaves you vulnerable. The Cotterell and Heather Sage Jerusalem fires single shells to a good range, more or less accurately. You order two of your party to get it back to your vessel and fit it immediately. The Ozymandias groans again. The structure st shudders spasmodically. So now we can take the bat. The heavens are wide, so locomotives use scouts like bats to locate things of interest. Ports, resources, wrecks like this one to scavenge. Eyes in the sky, the bat treats its rescue as an inconvenience and immediately begins haggling over pay. You offer to put it back in its damn cage and leave it on the Ozymandias, at which point it becomes more polite. You doubt it will last. And this is kind of the thing. It's an educated bat. It can speak. It's weird. It's a little strange. So we've got to return to the Orpheans. Too dangerous to stay. Away, you lead your boarding party back to your vessel. Unshackling her from the buckling Ozymandias, you stoke your engines and steam away, restocked, repaired, and rearmed. The crew give a ragged cheer. Our terror has reduced. That's one of the... It's down here in the lower left. Uh, so terror is an important resource. So now we can send out the scout. Okay, so it costs supplies in this game, so you have to think about it. In the last game, you, you had a scout that you could send out. Scout returns. It has found something. You had a scout you could send out, but it didn't cost resources. Okay, so... We found this, uh, I don't know what, it's a station. Okay, your scout has discovered a station. So, can I set that as a, okay, it doesn't look like it. Okay. Summoned by Captain Whitlock. The walls of the captain's cabin are lined with a hodgepodge of curious of curios from across the sky. Captain Whitlock lies in bed. Black marks cover her skin like a monstrous brand. When she coughs, coils of acrid smoke poil from her lungs. Pour from her lungs. Poil. That's not a word. Inquire if the captain's injuries are approached the bedside. Uh, I'm going to approach the bedside. The captain opens her eyes as you draw near. She attempts to smile. Her mouth is blistered from the blue fires that dance on her tongue. Her hand grips your arm. Her skin is hot as a kettle. Made arrangements. The Orphean will be yours. Her voice is just a rasp of burned meat breath. But promise. She breaks off to scream a word in a language that was not made for human mouths. When she resumes speaking English, she is weaker. Her request little more than a gasp. Promise me one last service. Promise. Uh, I'm going to promise her I will obey her last command. She sinks back, relieved. All in my will. She gasps. Be better. Be a better. She breaks off as the sigils burned into her bones flare, glowing cherry red through her flesh and skin. Better captain than I. The effort exhausts her. She sinks back into the scorched pillows and a twisting, frantic fever. The walls of the captain's cabin are... Oh, these are, I already read this. So take your leave. You have an engine to command. You leave the cabin and scorch stink of its air behind and return to the bridge. New Winchester is further than you'd like and the captain hasn't long left. Let's fire the cannons. Oh! So we got enemies. Okay, so we got heat problems. combat is <laughs> pretty intense and a little hard to control because of the way the 
Uh, there we go. There's a good hit. Because I'm not... Like, I, dodging is not really where you would... I'm not dodging where I would expect to dodge. Because I'm facing down, you know? If that makes any sense. Yeah. There we go. Took her down. I don't know what this is. Loots. The Reach Marauder is defeated. You approach the buckled wreckage poised to plunder the plunderers. Behind you, someone is humming a song of victory. Marauders pillage homesteads and hunt travelers all across the Reach. They often carry stolen valuables. So strip it to refer repairs. Scavenge the Marauder's plating and use again components to repair the damaged Orphean. Um... We may, I think we took some damage, so yeah. Your engines, the engineers scoured the remains of the Marauder for intact parts. Even before its defeat, it was rusting and rickety. It's plating a patchwork of reclaimed steel and repurposed bronze wood, but enough can be salvaged to repair some of the damage to your own locomotive. So gain three hull. So you can also see, like, our supplies are going down a little bit. That's because we have, we use them up over time. So let me remind me, this is, okay, so we just know that's a station. We don't know what it is. The taste of smog, the sound of iron on iron. We are home. New Winchester. That's so cool that it's little rails to, to dock. You coast into the bustle, the din, the soot, and the steam of Wolvesy Station. It is clogged with other engines, scrappy mining locomotives from Lustrum Way, weathered explorers gleaming with frost, sleek company vessels with bright brass fittings. No sooner have you pulled into the sidings than a brusque station master bustles over. He requests to come aboard. I must speak with your captain, he insists, brandishing a leather ledger. The usual formalities. Look to the orphan's doctor. He has just appeared at your shoulder. His face is solemn. His hat is in his hands. He lowers his eyes. The crew exchange, a bleak, exchange bleak, wordless looks. The Orphean itself feels suddenly more empty. The station master looks confused. You inform them that, unfortunately, Captain Whitlock has just passed. Ah, he says neutrally. Sorry to hear that. Very sad. Very sad. He waits for what he considers an appropriate minute, and a minute and a half before continuing. Alas, even amidst great tragedy, the cogs of bureaucracy must turn. If Captain Whitlock is deceased, the station authority require their answers from the first officer. He dons a set of spectacles and locates his pen. It will be relatively painless. Name, background, purpose of visit, etc. Shall we begin? Okay, so <laughs> this is character creation now that we've played through the tutorial. So today, London lies between the stars. Her new empire unfolds across the heavens. But ten years ago, before the northern gate was opened, before the renewed empress led her people into the skies, it lay in a vast cavern far beneath the earth, deep, dark, marvelous. Who were you then? Um... So I like to play these games as sort of a more of a sailor. This is cool though. This is more options. Um, so the idea of you know being an auditor, a revolutionary, um, an academic. So I might go with academic. Uh, I think that's what I want. Yeah. You were an academic. Perhaps you were educated at one of the esteemed colleges of Benthic or Somerset. Perhaps you taught yourself through trial and error and grit. So I like the idea of the language of the heavens. These are such cool. I like the way they write these. Um, yeah. They call it the correspondence, the oldest of alphabets. It is maddening, revelatory, and occasionally inflammatory. That sounds like me. Choose an ambition. What does winning mean to you? This is a cool question. I love the idea of asking the player, what does winning mean to you? I don't know how manifested it is because I never really won Sunless Seas, but they ask you a similar question there. So wealth, fame, or the truth. This is what we're going to go for over here on the right. Even the stars have secrets, but they won't keep them from you. A message from an old friend begins an unwise quest to learn a secret that the stars hide. What drives you? Curiosity? Justice? Insolence? Whatever it is, it will be tested. So it says this is a demanding ambition, best played by a lineage that's already completed wealth or fame. So maybe we'll pass on that for now. We'll go with fame, maybe. 
You will, you're, you will immortalize your exploits in the Song of the Sky. For centuries, people have launched themselves into the unknown in the hope of making a name for themselves. You're sure you'll succeed, after all. You never heard of anyone who didn't. I, you know, actually, you want a comfortable retirement, and by comfortable, you mean extravagant. Many have made their fortunes out among the stars. Many more have failed, broken and lost in the drifting night. Will you be different? So let's, knowing that the truth is kind of hard, let's go back. This is a little bit role-playing-y of me, but I'd like to play, I think, a sailor. If we're going to go with wealth or fame. And I think we're going to go with wealth. So I still want to say that we explored. Let me read it, though. Your, yours were far lonely journeys. You endured nameless hardships. Hardships. You rallied your crew in the face of utmost uncertainty. And then we'll go with wealth. And now we can go to appearance. This is much more detailed than it was in Sunless Sea or Fallen London. You get a curio like this, but you don't get this editing ability you just pick from a list so that's kind of cool uh let's see here two hat wise what do we want for hats sure jeez a lot of brows okay what is brow one? You got like six. Go from those five. Chin five. That seems like the sailor's beard, right? And there you go. Sailor, sailor's look. Uh, so, term of address. So, Captain. We're going to go with Captain. Captain. Uh, just go with my. Eh, no. Hang on. I know some of the random names they give us. I like Captain Murphy kind of a lot. Let's be Captain Murphy. Okay. There we go. So we got starting stats down here. I like the way those look. Three weeks have passed. This morning, Captain Whitlock received a simple memorial service. Her body was consigned to a necropolis train bound for the serene mausoleum. Now you sit with a handful of her relatives in the, in the threadbare offices of her solicitors. A methodical notary is reading the will. The captain was wealthy once, but once... One, well, excuse me. The captain was wealthy once, but squandered her capital on mysterious expenses before her expedition to the Blue Kingdom. The captain's... Excuse me. The captain's relatives, for whom she was mostly estranged, are clearly wondering why you are here. So, advice for captains. Let's see. Okay. Thank you. Listen to the end. In a final codicil, the notary announces Captain Whitlock confirmed that possession of the Orphean was to pass to its first officer. He peers at you with dry gray eyes. This includes a certain black box he contained, contained in the Orphean's hold. Captain Whitlock's final request was that, at a time of your choosing, your transport said box to an address in London. He hands you an address card and deposit it there. You are not to look inside. She gave no explanation. And that's it. You're captain now. The Orphean is yours. So now we can sort of go and investigate the black box. You can take it to London. You can sell it. You've been bequeathed the large black box with which once belonged to Captain Whitlock. And we have 100 sovereigns. So now we're in Wolvesley Station. This is how you interact generally in, in this and uh, Sunless Sea. Although the interface here is a lot prettier than it was in Sunless Sea. Um, the clamoring central station of New Winchester, a place of steam and smut and thundering iron. Here you can find people willing to pay for a cap skilled captain service. So you can kind of use these menu options to find jobs, um, to, you know, do things like get repair. You can hire crew because we have, you know, crew ratings, we have supplies down here. Um, so having finished that, uh, I think we're going to call it... Let's see what happens if I close this. Yeah, okay. I think we're going to call it for this first episode of Sunless Skies. We'll be back with another one soon. Um, and we'll start kind of working that ambition, see where we want to go next.
thanks for watching. Uh, make sure that you uh, check out some of the other videos. We're trying to do more video content this year. Andre's playing through Kingdom Hearts 3 right now. Uh, it's a really cool playthrough. I haven't watched much because I plan to play that game eventually, but the little bits and pieces that I've seen are great. Uh, make sure you catch the podcast live at 1.45 p.m. Pacific time. Um, on We're live on Facebook, and I think we're streaming to Twitch now to a number of services. Um, just follow everything you see in the sidebar, and you'll be able to catch us when we go live, and you can also check out the archive of all of our shows over at fix.space. Thanks so much for watching.